All right, we are back, and guess what? Big Kahuna is back finally. Woohoo! We got him back. You know, Teddy, I think he was in South Beach hanging out with well, some of no. these beautiful women for the last few weeks. Let, let's be honest. You guys bailed me out of county, and I appreciate <laughs> it greatly. All right, well, you, you know, that happens in sports betting sometimes. Yeah, well, guys guys win a lot of money, yeah. and then they just take off and go spend it all. That's, I think that's what that's what Big Kahuna was doing. He was I, spending all his winnings. I don't know, but he took all my winnings I made last week of bailing his ass out, so uh, <laughs> I guess we're going to have to pick some more winners this week. Alright, we're back. This is the one and only OSB Sports Podcast Show. I am Scott Matthews. I'm joined by my main man over here, Mr. Teddy Brooks, the CEO of the Sports Profits. Welcome back, Teddy. And... <laughs> like I just said, the big kahuna himself, Mr. Tommy D, is in the house. It's, it's good to be free, guys. Uh, great seeing everyone here. I like the sunglasses, man. What's the deal? You were hanging out in South Beach. Now you got the sunglasses yeah, hanging well, from the shirt. It, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't South Beach, but uh, All right. it's good to be back. Are you ready for some football? I'm ready, man. What about baskets? Let's, well, I'll leave basketball up to you. I've been, I've been concentrating more on football, but, yeah, college hoops is back, and uh, lots going on now. All right, guys, we got to talk about this. This is a big-time topic down here in South Florida and all over probably the sports betting world. The Hard Rock, the Seminoles, the tribe, they call them. They got sports betting back. What's your thoughts on that, Mr. Ted? Well, I have a lot of thoughts. It's right in your backyard now. It's right in my backyard. I grew up going to the Seminole Hard Rock. I was playing poker there with a fake ID when I was a teenager. That's that's how much connection I have to the Hard Rock. Um <laughs> But now fast forward 25 years later, and uh, it's cool. I wish that things were a little bit different. I wish that we could have competition where multiple companies could come in like every other state. But I'm not going to be against it. I'm going to be there on December 7th if they do have their grand opening. And I'll well, be they had a soft opening uh, yesterday on the, the, the online. The, the, right. the app is live. If you downloaded the app the first Prior. time around, right. you, you can play now. If not, you got to wait till December 7th. Th there's a waiting list. Yeah, there's a wait for the people that aren't on it yet. It's just a weird way. They, they're they doing things very differently than the other sports books. So we'll see what happens. I was telling Scotty Big Kahuna last week that we need to uh, go talk to them and see if they'll let us do a show there. We can have the producers right bring... Right out of that nice sports book yeah, area. we can have the producers bring the whole studio over. Come on, Ben, make it happen. Let's go. <clears throat> you could do it. You got the juice. I'm on it. I'm on it. All right, good. Well, guys, we got a lot to talk about. NBA's here, college basketball, which uh, Teddy and I love. Big Kahuna, I'm sure, is a big fan of the college basketball when it comes to making money. And uh, we got a lot of good things. The World Series is done, finally. Congratulations to you with your pick on Texas. The uh, Rangers, they took us long and strong. I'm proud of them. It was a cool, uh, you know, they just, especially when they made the move for Scherzer, even though he didn't really finish the season because he was hurt, that's when you knew that they believed in themselves. So, yeah, cool stuff. And it was the first time they ever won it. Exactly. And you know what? They were powerful. They uh, went out with a bang, as they say. They they absolutely destroyed Arizona. But that's long gone already. We got a lot to talk about. We got a Thursday night game in the NFL. Not the greatest game, guys. I got to be honest with you. You got uh, two of the shit shows, as I call them, uh, in the NFL. Carolina going to Chicago. And you got Chicago as a three and a half point favorite at home. I'm going to start and see what the big kahuna's on his mind since he hasn't been here. What's your thoughts on that game? Do you have any opinion? Well, I've been looking at this high school football game in Texas tomorrow, uh -oh. and, and it has more <laughs> promise than this game. This is a true shit show. Whoever puts together these schedules for Thursday night football, I'd have to question what the hell they're Jeff doing Bezos, here. Jeff Bezos, I think. Jeff well, Bezos. Yeah. Might. Well, you got two teams bottom of the you know barrel here. Bears 3-5, and five, 1 ATS. Uh, Cardinals 1-6-1 and one ATS. Uh, there's not much to say about this game. Bryce Young for Carolina, he's been messing up big time, throwing a lot of interceptions. Uh, the Panthers are 27th in offense, scoring average 17 points per game. Not to say much for the Bears. This is a game I personally would not bet. If I have to put out a lean, I think Bryce Young has some promise here. The franchise is sticking with him. I'm going to take the field goal and a half in the Whitney City with Carolina to cover this number. But this is just a game that anything is possible. 
Okay, so you're taking Carolina plus the three and a half. You're leaving it on the three and a half yeah, number. I'll it is? leave it at the three and a half. I okay. think Carolina could hang in there, but this is a game that you just have no offense. By the way, uh, I th the record on uh, Chicago's two and seven, not three and five. He was talking about against the spread. Oh, against the spread. Okay. ATS, yeah. Both gotcha. teams are horrible, but I I'll take the I'll take the three and a half. All right. Well, you heard from the big Kahuna what he likes. Let's talk to Teddy. Any opinion on this game? I because mean, I know you look at these things through and through. I do, and I look at a game like this, and it's really to me. I always, if I have to bet it, I lean dog and under on Thursday night. I can't bring myself to touching this game four. I'm seeing four at some books. It seems like a lot. Uh, it seems like a lot. So I, I would, if I had to, if you put a gun to my head and said you have to bet this game, I'd probably throw a little bit on Carolina. But, boy, uh, we were talking about Bryce Young. Ooh. What happened and, there? The stock, and you look, the stock dropped. And you look at C.J. Stroud and what he's oh, doing. Was that amazing last week? And, or boy, what? Do the Panthers have to regret not what taking Stroud? What did he throw for, like 400 and something yards? Four touchdowns th in the high threes or low fours. Yeah. Last second one, drive. One, he had 46 seconds to drive the ball 70 yards. He, and he almost got screwed it done. me. I had the dog in that game, and I got a three and a half, so thank God. I actually rolled with the Texans on the money line. I think I talked about it a little bit on the show last week, but yeah, it was a good win. That's why, guys, you always take that money line. If it's like two, two and a half, I love taking the money line there. It's a little costly, but the numbers add up for it. Well, you got two college football games on the board uh, Thursday night. Any, anybody uh, having a lean on any of those two games? I actually have more than a lean. I'm okay. looking at this Virginia-Louisville game, All and, right. you know, Louisville's just having an unbelievable season. 8-1, and 5-3-1 and one ATS. Now you look at a Virginia. Their ATS, not bad, 6-3, and three. But but Virginia had their what, what's their uh, the saying here? They had their ten minutes of fame. They did have some success with UNC. They mm -hmm. did bring Miami to OT. Then they come home and got clobbered by a Georgia Tech team. Yeah, blown so no, out. Yeah, blown out. I mean, uh, the line is a big number, twenty and a half. But I, I'll lay the twenty and a half with the Cardinals because I think Virginia does not show up at this game. I could see a, just a big big blowout. Take the Cardinals minus the 20 and a half. Yeah, I mean, in a game like this, you could see uh, Louisville, you know, obviously wants to stay up there in the rankings. They're ranked 100%. number 11. They probably want to try to crack the top 10 if somebody loses and they have a good performance. So, you know, I could see a team like that looking to come out and steamroll a team like Virginia. I'm not touching any of these games on Thursday. I got such big plays on the weekend I'll talk about. But any opinion you have on any of these two college football games on Thursday night? Yeah, Southern Miss is playing Louisiana Lafayette. These are both two teams in decline. Ugly game it's going to be. Um, but I'm looking at two things in this game. Number one, Southern Miss tends to beat. Louisiana Lafayette. Actually, they don't tend to beat them. They do beat them. They're nine and zero against them straight up, eight and zero against the spread. So not only do they beat them, but they cover spreads. They were a three point dog last year. They beat them outright. Now they're a ten and a half, eleven, eleven and a half, moved from twelve. Here's the thing about this game: Louisiana Lafayette. While they're not good, now they lost their second string quarterback, Zion Chris, and they're on their third string quarterback right now. Chandler, that's, that's tough to overcome. Chandler Fields, and that is hard to overcome, and it is hard to cover a 10, 10 and a half point spread when you're on your third quarterback. I'm going with Southern Miss simply for that fact. So you think it's Southern Miss might wake up this week finally? Uh, they're going to cover 10 and a half. I, I right. think you know they'll probably still lose, but I mean they might win. They they have a history of doing it, but they're going to cover. That's they were many. a good program for a lot of years. They fell off the last few. I don't know what happened. They to did. That. They actually had a good game last week. They won uh, 28 to seven last week. So. Okay. Well, maybe they're on their way uh, to make that little uh, end of the season run there. All right. Well, we got a big week of football uh, this weekend. I mean, there's some nice matchups on the Saturday card. So wait a second. You don't have any predictions for your passing on Thursday uh, altogether? I just oh, didn't like man. these games. You don't want I didn't to dip like your toe into the water. Okay. No, I really didn't. There's just too many. There's too many good games, guys to chase after games that don't make sense. And I, I look at the don't make sense theory. If it doesn't make sense and it doesn't add up, I stay off it. I'd rather put my money on games I feel more comfortable with where I feel I have the edge, not chasing after a matchup. So that's why I'm... If it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make dollars. You know, like they say with OJ, if it, does not, if it doesn't fit, you if, must if have If the quit. glove doesn't fit. There you go. Remember that? Unbelievable. 
But uh, we got a big weekend of games. Anything you guys want to talk about before we get into the games, you know, for the weekend? Well, I mean, college college hoops is in full swing. And, you know, I have a little experience with college basketball following a lot of sharp guys. That is the true sport that sharps really excel in college basketball. I've been looking at some of these scores and lines. These numbers are off right now. There's a lot of opportunity in college basketball. You, you really got to do some homework here. But you'll see a lot of totals move four, five, six points from the opening number in college hoops. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. It, it, it's a fast-moving game as far as To betting. target. you got to hit that target. Yeah, or you, 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 got, you got to get the good number. But uh, it's going to be interesting. We're going to start talking about college hoops, or I will next week. But college basketball has a lot of lot of potential. You have any long range predictions? Have you looked at it yet? Or I, I, it's too to, to early be for honest, you? I, I know you've been busy. I, I, yeah. Well, I have not done so. I think we, next week we should probably start putting out some. Because uh, I got a couple early leans. But uh, little, little, anything you like? Uh, I think Teddy? we need to see a little bit. I like to see a week or two okay. yeah. of of what's going on. But one thing, if you follow my Instagram, which we just hit 10k followers yesterday. Oh, congratulations! By the way. Thank you. Nice. Um, so thank you to everyone out there that follows. Wow. I know some of you guys are watching this but if you follow my youtube for the last few years college basketball has always been my highest percentage sport and it goes back to what tommy said it goes back to the numbers it's a sport where there's so many games on every day that it's very hard not to find the odds makers making a mistake whereas in nfl these odds makers do not make mistakes um nba is brutal in my opinion, but college basketball is 100% where it's at. You can find numbers that are off, and what's going to happen is the odds makers are going to try to move them. You beat them to it, or you surpass them on it. You're going to make money. Yeah, that's what it's always been like. You gotta, you gotta, guys, you gotta pick these numbers. That they, you know, there's a lot of bad numbers out there early in the year, especially on a new sport. So you got to be careful. Don't fall into traps and just bet for the sake to bet. I mean, we we preach this day in, day out for years and years in this business, all of us. You know, don't chase after bad games. If you if if you have to stay away, stay away. Find find another game or another day and come back in when you when, when you have an edge. Two things that can make you money in sports betting as far as hockey, especially in hockey and college basketball, and that is riding hot teams. Before the hot odds, goalies, hot goalies, man. hot goalies, and yeah. hot teams. Before the odds makers have a chance to catch up, before the market catches up, and avoiding cold teams before the market catches up. Well, look at the Vegas Knights starting out with the, as we're doing this show, eleven one and one for the season. Amazing. The Bruins only miss one game. There's a couple of teams out there that have only you know dropped a game or two. Uh, L.A. Kings playing really well, seven two and two. Uh, in the first 11 games. So, you know, these are teams you got to watch. The numbers on certain teams like this, like uh, Ted was saying, you got to watch certain teams and you can really take advantage of them. You don't want to lay too high on these yeah, teams. Vegas Knights are minus 300. You got to go minus one and a half, but uh, you got to be careful. They're great, but they're, you're going to pay the price to bet them. Yeah, when they're on the road, though, they're not that high. Sometimes, I mean, there's value there. You got to pick the spot. Like, like I said, you got to find the spot. But we got a huge weekend of college football on Saturday. I don't know. You want to start it off, Teddy? Anything uh, like a big time play you're putting out? It's. I think we got to start putting out some big plays to try to help the audience that's following us try to cash some tickets. Is there a best bet? I or? actually have a Friday. You skipped right oh, over Friday. Friday okay. Showing no respect to Friday. Just because Friday was one of my only losers last week doesn't mean we you need want to, to skip come back over and it. prove yourself. So I need to, to come back. Yeah, I had Colorado State last Friday. They didn't get it done. Okay. I'm coming back this Friday. But Got three out games. of three out of our last four four weeks, three out of my last four weeks here, um, we put a, together a winning record. I the only week out of those four weeks I didn't have a winning record, I was wearing this hat. So I'm giving this hat a second chance <laughs> before we get into it. Uh, Friday, Wyoming versus UNLV. UNLV is quietly one of the most profitable teams in college football, 8-1 and one against the spread. They have uh, this Jaden Maiara quarterback. He is getting better every week, and I think they're still undervalued. They uh, are going against a Wyoming team that has a very good history against them, but not this year. I think UNLV covers this game. It's uh, five, five and a half right now. I wouldn't even move the line. <clears throat> Excuse me. I would keep it right where it's at. I think they win by a touchdown or more. All right. You heard it. The running Rebels from Las Vegas, UNLV, minus you five. Go. You were five or five and a half? Five. Okay. 
You you'll find, you'll is find that it a best somewhere. bet, or is that just a— It's a strong one. I have—so uh, what I did this week, and I think you're going to like this, and you're probably going to like this, Tommy. Normally, I pick a bunch of games that I really like that aren't really premier games. This week, I switched it up, and I tried to focus more on the premier games. Now, there are more leans, but i got to save some stuff for the guys that pay me, too. I'm coming on this sure. show just crushing it with these obscure games that no one's looking at. So this week, I decided to save the— the really best stuff for my paying clients, but we're going to look at some premier games, and I have one small game that uh, that I like that we'll break down. Well, that's a great point, uh, and all of us do this. You know, guys, we're trying to give you as many opinions as we can that we feel, and again, we're doing these shows days in advance, but our main service games, the ones that we really, really focus in, I can speak for myself, and I'm sure all you guys do it the same way, we're, we're right up to a couple hours, two, three hours before game time for our top selections. So we have more criterias and more uh, you know, channels to look through to make those plays even stronger right up to the minute. So that's why sometimes the private service games are definitely probably the way to go because more factors go into those games, and that's why we get better results. But we are trying to win, obviously, as many games as we can for the audience, correct? 100 percent and uh, where you're going to get our, our best stuff is go to our websites and our, our social channels um, but we do try our best on this show to put out the best uh possibilities yeah we just well. have obstacles we're doing yeah. the shows three days four days it, in it, advance exactly. That's, so the lines change injuries occur, weather changes you know a lot of stuff goes on guys right and uh you know we still look to give you that winning edge but listen i'm, I'm looking at this schedule for saturday and you mentioned some marquee matches we got michigan playing against Penn State. I don't know if you guys have an opinion on that game. That's going to be huge, Big Ten. You know, Michigan's Power going through. Michigan Michigan's four and a half. Yeah, it's four and a half. It moved at from Penn two State. and a half at Penn State. They're clearly the better team, clearly a great quarterback. A little controversy on That's them right now. That's what I was right going to say. They have yeah. controversy. I think they're being unfairly picked on right now. I don't know who has it out for Michigan. but they got a little hard on for Jim Harbaugh. Maybe. Someone's got an issue with Jim Harbaugh. I wouldn't be surprised if after this year Jim Harbaugh said F it and went, tried to go back to the NFL. He doesn't, he doesn't need this aggravation, you know. Um, he could get a job somewhere else. Oh, a thousand percent. He could go, not wherever he wants, but he could go a lot of places. And uh, there was talk about him going to the NFL last year, yeah. the year before. Yeah, it's been rumble. So this might be the year he does it with all this uh, this crap they're loaning on him. I just don't think it's right. And and the sign stealing thing. I mean, I don't know what your opinion on NFL uh, teams do that. It's out will. in the open. Yeah. There's been all kinds of stuff going on. There was the flake gate with New England. They always had accused New England of crazy stuff, you know, because they were winning all these championships and with the teams they had. So, you know, they were picked on. Now it's, uh, it seems like Michigan the last couple of years, now that they're a powerhouse, ranked, uh, what are they, ranked third in the country, undefeated. That's going to be the big showdown game, I'm sure. Both teams probably going to go in undefeated. Ohio State, Michigan, the end of the year. So, you know. When you, when, you get a, when you get a bullseye on you, you get a bullseye on you in sports. That's how, it, unfortunately, it goes. But looking at some more games here, and, and again, I'm going to ask you guys for your best bet. Uh, we're also looking at Tennessee and Missouri. That should be an interesting game. You got in the Pac-12, Utah and Washington should be a pretty damn good game. Uh, those two, two teams ranked, obviously, Washington battling, trying to stay in the, in the race there for the uh, championship in the top four. Right now they're just on the outside at number five. So let's. I'm going to start it with Big Kahuna. Big Kahuna. Do you like anything on Saturday? I do. Best bet. And, and you're gonna. This is goes goes to your. Uh, I guess your uh, other side of the family here. Bama, Kentucky. Other side. Now listen. You got a team like Alabama now that's on just a total roll here. They've scored what like 76 points the last two games. Nick Saban, you do not bet against this time of the year, especially on a game like this. They're on the road, true. But I just see Bama coming into Kentucky and just blowing Kentucky out. I, I don't see how Kentucky's going to be able to hang in there. Saban's going to pour on the points on the second half. Uh, Kentucky gives up 40 points a game. I think the line's pretty cheap at 10 and a half here. You can't bet against Bama. You can't bet Kentucky. I like Bama to cover by at least two touchdowns here. Makes sense. I mean, it, it, it's uh, Nick Saban, I think, uh, yeah. master. I'm not looking for anything difficult on Saturday. I think Bama rolls okay. and covers. Anything else? 
Well, I do have a lean on 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 another game here. Okay. You know, I like to follow Coach Prime in Colorado. Oh boy, Coach yeah. Prime. Well, heard that we been, haven't talked about Coach Prime well, since you yeah, left. Well, right? Coach Prime is at home. Coach against, Prime is a thing of the past. Against Arizona, ranked Arizona, I believe, is ranked twenty third in the nation. But I'll tell you, I think uh, Colorado plays tough at home. I think Coach Prime's uh, quarterback son is going to put up a lot of points. They're getting ten and a half. I'm taking the points with Colorado at home on Saturday against Arizona. I think they hang in there, and uh, that would be a lean, but Bammer is my best play for Saturday. Okay. Let's go to the uh, the one and only here, Mr. Teddy Brooks. Well, yeah, See first, what he likes. First of all, Tommy, I agree with you 100% on Bama. Um, a lot of people think that because they're coming off of those two emotional wins, it's going to be tough for them to travel to Kentucky. I don't. And the one thing you didn't mention is Jaden Milrow, the quarterback. He is coming into form. I mean, remember, he was benched in the second or third game of the season. He showed great leadership while benched. He didn't didn't pout about it. He came in and showed really uh, good qualities, came back in, and he's been lights out ever since. I like Bama a lot. I mean, yeah, I'm looking at the other marquee games. Scotty. I got to ask you one uh, step in uh, Florida, Florida, uh, Miami, and Florida State. Not touching it. I'm okay. I'm touching three of the marquee marquee games you mentioned. If I had to touch it, I would say Florida State. I think 14. these are two teams going in the opposite directions. But why I won't touch it is these games are always crazy. Miami, Florida State is always close. It's always intense, and it's just not to me something I want to put my money on. Okay. I'm looking at Tennessee on the money line versus Mizzou. This game doesn't have playoff implications, but both teams are top 15. They have a lot to play for. These are burgeoning programs. Joe Milton is looking very good. So lately, lately he's starting to use his legs, and it's really opening up what he's being able to do. I think if he continues that, and if Joe Milton has a good game at quarterback, I think Tennessee money line all day. They're like a one point favorite. Yeah, I don't know. This line is really confusing to me. I, I would have thought for sure that Missouri in this spot, because, you know, they're playing pretty much on the same level, and Missouri was playing excellent. And they're at just, home. And they're, they're a dog. I mean, it just doesn't, you know, it's one of those like, hmm, things that make you, are they trapping you in? Because I'm going to disagree with you totally. I know you like Tennessee. I like Missouri in this game. I think they're playing dynamite. They just ran into the number one team basically in college football for the past three years in Georgia, and they gave Georgia a hell of a fight in their building. So I think that game could you know, really spark them, and I really think that uh, Missouri got a hell of a shot. I mean, I, I don't understand the line on this game. i got to be honest. I thought they'd be about a two, two-and-a-half, three-point favorite over Tennessee. And that's exactly another reason why I'm going Tennessee. I looked at the line. I said, you know, you usually give about between two and three points to the home team. So you think this would be an even matchup. So those two, two and a half points, like you said, would go towards Missouri, but they're not. And for me, that makes me even want to take Tennessee more. You know, here's the thing also. Tennessee doesn't play well on the road this year. They're one and two on the road, and the one win that they had was against Kentucky, and it was barely – Every every reason in the world for Missouri to be favored by a couple points here, and they're not. The odds makers are giving a lot of respect to Tennessee, and I'm rolling with the odds makers on this one. Well, they do give respect to Tennessee more so than they would Missouri, but I just think Missouri's got the firepower and they got some talented weapons on both sides of the ball that they can stay in this game. So I think they're a live dog at home. I mean, not that it's a live dog, you know, you're getting uh, plus one at this point in time. Maybe maybe it goes down to pick them. This game could flip and Missouri could go to one by the by Saturday, I'm sure. It, it could happen. It could. I don't it, think it's going to go any higher. I think it has a shot to go lower. So uh, another game to test our head-to-head here. <coughs> yeah, I, li- I like I like Missouri in this okay. game. Anything else you guys looking at? I'm I'm looking forward to Sunday, but All you right. guys Big have Big Kahuna's anything? ready to run well, the I'm, Sunday. I'm not yet. I'm, All right. I'm not even <laughs> loving Sunday, but I like – I mean, I could make it quick. I can't bet against Michael Penix right now in Washington. Utah, yeah, they have a good defense, but I think they're a little overrated. When Utah faces a good offense, they, they get 30-plus yeah. points scored against them every single time. I don't think it's going to be any different here. I'm on Washington. And then USC, Oregon. Ooh, what happened to USC? Did you guys see Caleb Williams crying – I mean, yeah, listen, no, it, it, you know, he's a human. He has emotions. I get it. But that's not a good look, in my opinion. He was crying with his mom. Yep. If you're crying because of a victory, that's different. But he's getting his ass whooped, and he's crying about it. And he's not really the problem. The defense is the problem. The defense has given up 40-plus points in, 
I think, five of their last six games, and the only game they didn't give up 40 points. They gave up 34 to Utah. Uh, they don't have a quarterback. Remember, um, Cam Rising's out for the year. They're 0-7 against the spread in their last seven games. Wa- uh, Oregon's 8-1 and against the spread. Bo Nix has a Heisman Trophy to win here. Bo Nix has an NFL draft to position himself yeah. for here. Bo Nix is good, man. They've been putting up 40-plus points if – and I think Oregon will eventually face Washington again in the championship game. Yeah, makes sense. So Bo Nix is setting up for that. If he can beat Washington in the championship game, he might pull that Heisman right out of Penix's hands. It's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. I also like Oregon team total over here. So Oregon minus the points and Oregon team total over whatever the number is. Guys, you probably going to need a calculator or a, a big pen and paper C- to write down all these games that uh, Teddy's I'm giving, giving it out. all away. CPA, Teddy, save some games for, for your clients. <laughs> That's why I said I'm doing the big games. My clients are getting the obscure games that no one's paying attention to. Right. And one other play that I like is a best bet. I like Oregon State to blow out Stanford. I think they'll crush them. I just think Stanford's going to have one of those games where they just don't show up. This week will be that week, and I think Oregon State is going to roll, not roll tide, but just roll in general and get the job done. I see them winning this game by about 27 or 35 points. So I would jump on Oregon State minus the points against Stanford. The line right now is 21 as we speak. I would not allow it to go any higher. Matter of fact, if you guys could buy it online, which most can, lock it in at 20 and put it in minus 20 with Oregon State. That's my 10-unit best bet for Saturday. So, quick quick question for yes. you. Yes. Because I couldn't figure this one out. Maybe you have a lean on it. Ole, I think it's going to be a good game. Ole Miss, Georgia. Do you have anything on that game? Ooh. Either of you? Ten and a half, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I can't go against Georgia, and I know, you know, Ole Miss has been playing, you know, lights out. I, it, that's a tough one. Sounds I'm, like I, we're all staying away. From yeah, that. I'm. I'm not getting in. I'm not. There's it, nothing there pointing me in either direction. Juicing up on Georgia. That's that's a that's a big number. Yeah, it's right not there. really. It's not really juicing up. I think you know Georgia gets the respect that you know they've been the best team in college football. Let's face it, for the last, they won the last two championships. They're undefeated. I mean, you know, they get the respect they deserve. Ten and a half. You know, that's that's a. That's I a, agree with Tommy. I think it, I think this should be like a seven eight point game. Yeah. I think they're juicing Georgia a couple points. Well, I think Georgia's probably handled Mississippi, if I'm not mistaken, pretty well over the years. I don't think Mississippi I it. has much luck against a team like Georgia. And you know Georgia's still pissed off that they're ranked second. So they're going to have an opportunity like this playing against a top team. You know if they got it in them, they're going to try to come out and blow them they out. They need to, yeah. And and both of these coaches are from the Saban tree. So. Yeah, Saban tree has been a good tree in college football, right? 100%. Yeah, yeah. anything that comes out of uh, Tuscaloosa seems uh, to be uh, pretty good wherever it goes. So yeah. uh, Nick Saban is a mastermind. All right, guys, I think we spent a lot of time here in college football. We got the big boys playing on Sunday. I like a couple of games. I'm sure both guys, my experts here, like a couple of games. I'm going to start it with you, Teddy. I want to get the best bet. For Sunday from you in the NFL uh, on the show, obviously, your yeah, best bet. I'm going to give one NFL here. I'm not going to go crazy like I do with college. I'm looking at the 49ers, right? This is a team that was undefeated. They've had some missteps and mishaps, but they're playing against the Jags here, and I think the Jags are going to get taken back to earth this Sunday. The 49ers are 5-3. and th- Jags actually have a better record than them right now. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, Jags have won, I think, five in a row. They well, certainly have. And the other team has lost three in a row. So Zion something's got to right. give here. Something's yeah, got to give here. But, straight. I mean, if you look at who the Jags have played besides Buffalo in the but last— they had the week off, right? They got yeah, both off. of these teams coming off Come of a bye. Off. Jags yeah. were in London for two weeks. Jags were in London for two weeks. Um, I think that's really why they beat Buffalo. They had that advantage. They were already there for 10 days before Buffalo got there. So Buffalo was probably jet lagged. Jacksonville wasn't. No respect for Jacksonville this year at all, right? Even though they're playing well, they seem to always find a way to be the dog in matchups. They do, but this is where they they deserve to be the dog. I think. Well, they know they were favored against uh, Pittsburgh. Yeah, well, that Pittsburgh was yeah. Yeah, not and a world beater, but no, they but weren't favored against Buffalo. They're not favored in this game with a team that's lost three in a row when they're winning five in a row and they had a bye week and now they're coming home. So you know, this probably isn't news to anyone, but. If anyone doesn't know this, if the season ended right now, every 
AFC North team would be in the playoffs. Cincinnati, yeah. Cleveland, I was gonna mention Pittsburgh, that. and Baltimore. That's pretty unique. It doesn't really happen Top very often. Top teams in a AFC for sure out of the North Division. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm on San Fran. I think uh, best bet? Know, best bet. I think Debo Sam especially if Debo Samuel, he's probable. I think he's going to come back. If he comes back, it, it's going to be tough. for J Jacksonville has been good on defense, but they haven't faced the weapons here i think i'm um, christian mccaffrey debo samuel brock purdy plays a good game all right san fran all day i'd probably play him on the money line let's go over to tommy see what tommy's best bet is in the nfl for sunday well I know you, you've been you, sitting you, on you something. got you got some stiff competition here my friend because i've been eyeing this game also san fran jacksonville <laughs> i respectfully going the opposite way. I love it. Uh, Sam Fran lost three games in a row. Jacksonville won five. Might be the sunglasses. We, 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 all, we, we, we all know this, but Jacksonville is underrated, and uh, both teams come off a bye. Jacksonville was over in London for two weeks. I don't think that really matters here. I'm going to grab the three and a half points here. I, I could see Jacksonville hanging in there. I do respect what you're saying about San Fran. And, hey, listen, they could certainly blow them out. But I'm going to take the points with Jacksonville. They got the momentum. San Fran is coming off three losses here. So, so I'm going to yeah, take. Yeah, what happened? I mean, they were yeah, like, everyone was talking. They, they, they came out of the gate. Get to the Super Bowl. They came they out of the gate. And I, I'm going to take the points, three and a half, with a team that's five, la winning the last five. I'll grab the field goal and a half. Okay, Trevor Lawrence, man, he's uh, he's yeah. no slouch, especially at home. He uh, knows how to get that team uh, moving in the. They seem to be playing error-free uh, football, which is good. But, you know, San Francisco was playing tremendous, and then all of a sudden... Well, don't forget, they lost their number one offensive yeah, lineman. that's true. And they lost Debo Samuel. So yeah, they that's... lost Debo Samuel and Trent and, Williams. And Jacksonville's at home on this one. So they're coming back from a two-week stint in London. And just a quick thing, I think the NFL is definitely planning to get a franchise in Europe sometime. Might be 10 years. They're playing in Germany. They're playing in London. They're playing in Mexico. They're not just doing that for the hell of it. They're going to expand in Europe. Well, they've been doing this for a long time. They've been doing but a long come time. Out of it but, but one day you will see a team. I say London is the place. Maybe you should bring a team over. Well, there Jack Jacksonville is the team for London. That is their team. I don't know how they adopted Jacksonville, but Jacksonville yeah. is like the team in London. Okay. They have a big fan club. One day you'll see a franchise in Europe. By the way, what happened to the Miami Dolphins uh, on Sunday? I mean, yeah. they didn't even show up in a game like that. They, they were there they, early. They were relaxed. They went there like three days before Kansas City, and they don't even score in the first half. They made nothing but mistakes. Tua looked terrible. I don't know, man. They can't win against it good was teams. A weird, well, that's what I said last week, and you said, no, they're going to do it this week. Yeah, I said, they since let me week down. three. Them in Dallas. Since, let's not even, <laughs> Scotty, you need to learn your lesson right? about betting on uh, Dallas. Give me those sunglasses, will you? Against the premier yeah, cover teams. Up today. All right. You could buy these in Walmart for the nine Eagle. bucks. What do you want them for? Come me? on. <laughs> Big Goon and I'll buy nine dollar glasses now. I love betting Sorry, against Teddy. the Cowboys. I might even bet against the Cowboys this week. They're, they're like, like huge favorites. They're like sixteen point favorites against the Giants. But no, I think with the Dolphins, they have a problem. They can't they they haven't beat a team over five hundred in the last two years. How the hell are they gonna get in the, um, with the playoffs? I mean they got a, they're in the playoffs at this point, but you know, they still got, uh, what, it's seven, eight games and, left. And that big MVP candidate, Tua, they made a nice run. So it was weird because 21 nothing in the first half and then 14 nothing Couldn't Dolphins in the, the second ball. half. Here's the thing. Tua had the chance. He had a wide. He had two wide-open receivers in that last drive. He could have yeah. won that game if he made a good pass. All he had to do was make one of those two passes, and he missed them both. Well, that's the problem. You know, when they have to do it, they don't seem to pull I, it, come I, through and do I, it. I touted the Dolphins earlier in the season. They're not a Super Bowl team yet. That's the bottom line, in my opinion. They they they'll they'll go far. They're not gonna. They're not gonna. They they're not a team of that caliber. Maybe a year, two years. I don't know. I would say that right now, if I had to like match up two teams or a side by side mirror, it's the Dolphins and the Cowboys. They both can't beat good teams. They find way, but they can beat everyone else and blow everyone else out. They're almost like a mirror image if you look at And I, I think agree. they have the same record, right? I agree, yeah. And it's like the Dolphins and the Cowboys, when they match up against quality teams, they find a way. To, but the, I'll tell you, the Cowboys did play a hell of a game against Philly uh, in that game. I mean, they had a shot yeah. to win it. They played okay. You know, one thing with those two teams is their quarterbacks determine a lot. And 
The one thing I'll say about the Dolphins is Tua is still much younger than Dak. So if Tua can mature and get better and better, I think they'll have more of a chance to become a better team. Dak's like, he's not at the end of his career, th- but he's I not think, getting I any younger. I think Dak's rope is getting real short. That's what I'm saying. He's not getting with any Dallas, younger. With he, Dallas. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while, and he hasn't really done anything. So I got two dynamite plays I love in the NFL. I want to give them to you. They're both best bets. I love the over in the Houston and Cincinnati total, 48 points. I would bring it down to 47, buy a point down. I like this game a lot. I think there'll be a lot of points in this game. I think Joe Burrow's going to light it up. And we see what C.J. Stroud has been doing. Unbelievable as a rookie. He finds ways to move the ball. They do score points. Uh, they, they have the opportunity, I should say, to score points. I love this game to go over the 47. And one of the best bet, the hottest team quietly, no one really talks about them, is this Baltimore team. I mean, we're all sitting here strong. talking about strong. Dallas strong. and Philly and San Francisco yeah. and the Dolphins, but no one's talking about Baltimore. And all this team does is rack up Ws. I think they beat Cleveland easily this week. I would. The line is six points. I don't think Cleveland has the talent to stay with them, and I just think Baltimore is going to find ways to cause turnovers in this game and, and really upset the uh, apple cart, as they say. I like Baltimore in this game to win. My, lay the six, guys. This is a 10-unit best bet for me in the NFL on Sunday. Wow. Like it. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Big Cohen? Am I in on the foot I, while you're I, I have one, in South Beach hanging out? Oh, yeah. Well, well, once again, uh, I have one more play for Sunday. It's, right. it's kind of a lean. This Seattle. What's up with these leans, guys? Come well, on. Let's well, get, I'm going to get... bet the game, but I'm saying Seattle's let's playing. Put the money up and put, put our money where our Seattle, mouth is. Seattle's playing the commanders. I'm not sold on this command, this team. Okay. I, I mean, they they, they, they beat you. Why, pick- why don't you like them? Well, I, I don't think they're consistent, number one. Okay. Seattle's going to come back after a, a loss here. They're at home. Right. I just think Seattle just beats the commanders by at least 10 points. Let me check uh, my numbers on yeah, this game. Yeah, the line game. should be six, give or take. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at this game. It's about six and a half, six, right. six and a half. I mean, the Commanders is a team also that they could come out one Sunday and play great or they can just be horrible. I just think Seattle comes back off the roll loss at home. I'm going to lay to six, six and a half for them to cover. You like anything on that game? Well, no, I'm not on that game. But you mentioned Baltimore, right? That Baltimore-Cleveland game and then the other game you mentioned, which was uh, the over in the Cincinnati game, I think Baltimore Cleveland's going to be a very low scoring game. I think that Cincinnati game is going to be an entertaining, high scoring game. I like um, the way Burrow's playing. And I like the way Houston finds ways to play. I think yeah. they can, when they match up, these two young quarterbacks are going to go at each other. And Baltimore is going to go deep. I think it's either going to be Baltimore or Cincinnati in the uh, oh yeah in the Super Bowl versus the Eagles out of the AFC. Out of the AFC, I'm not sold on KC at all. Well, um, you know what? We're, seems like nobody's sold on them, but all they do is win, win, yeah. win. So They're number one team right now. Yeah. I, the, until someone knocks them out, I mean literally knocks them out, they're going to be the team to beat. They're going to be the favorite all the way to the Super Bowl. You, you believe we're at the halfway point of the NFL season? It's it's quite amazing, isn't it? We're go- actually, I can't believe how I mean, how it, quick the year went by. We're already going to be a month away from we, we, uh, Christmas we, we start, already. We started wow. we started this show in late July, early August. It's it's week ten already, going into week ten. Uh, it's crazy. Two weeks left of college football. Crazy. And the season's done, and then we go into Tommy. Our favorite. I mentioned this last week. What do you think about extending the college football season? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, you, you could see that happening. It's all revenue in the end of the day right. with college sports. So you, you could see that happening. Uh, I'm also a believer one day you may see NFL 10 months a year somehow if they added more teams in Europe. You, uh, it's a stretch, but let me tell you, one. NFL is an aggressive marketing too many organization. Injuries. Too many injuries. Yeah, they would need more teams. More players. They would need more teams, but guess what? Who who wouldn't bet NFL 10 months a year? Oh, betting it, yeah. I mean, uh, well, you could bet it 365 days well, a year if it was available. I, I, the, but. the league will never admit it, or at least they may, might now. Let's face it, what, what really makes this all work it's all it's, it's all, all about the cashola it's now with this legal betting it's it's something definitely the leagues are looking at yeah if you created more teams and you gave the more chances. teams more bye weeks though so you now instead of having one bye week you can 
have more teams and give, but it would water down the competition a little bit. It, yeah. there, no doubt, it would they, water they, down they, the I think that's what makes it exciting because yeah. they only play so many games in they, such they, a they, period yeah, of time. They have a unique platform, a franchise. That's why it's so popular. But, you know, like I said, this Europe thing is interesting. I say one day you see multiple teams in Europe, possibly Mexico. So are we going to see you over in Europe hanging out like uh, with uh, some of those uh, hot European girls no, uh, down the road with the NFL, chasing after the NFL? Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. All right. Kelsey's <laughs> in trouble. Guy, ah. hey, Mr. Kelsey, you're Tommy, uh, Tommy D's looking for you, <laughs> looking to make moves here. All right, guys, anything else before we go? We had a long show here. Yeah, we gave no, out a, a lot of games away, I can tell you that. Guys, I hope you uh, wrote them all down or just follow the show and listen back because uh, we gave away a lot of stuff today. Anything else before we go? Anything uh, on your mind? Nothing. Nothing's on your mind. Nothing but Come winning. On. Nothing but winning. I've been staring at these games for the last three days. And I just want to see my labors well, what, become what, fruitful. What I have on my uh, mind is not fit for this audience, so we'll pass on that. I don't know. <laughs> the, the, the big kahuna went away, and he came back like a whole different animal. Hey, listen. Ben, like what's said, going on, Ben? <laughs> I think you got to get an ice bucket over here for the big kahuna to sit on for the next show. LD, LD, LD. <laughs> all right. There you go. LD, LD all the T way. Tell the good people where they could find us. Well, that's what I was going to get to, yeah. guys. It was another great show, action-packed. We uh, Hopefully, we helped you out. We're going to give you some winning advice and some uh, and even with all the winning advice we're giving you I want you guys to check out t uh, Ted tell me where everyone can find you on a daily basis on social media let yeah, them know so how they can get your information you could go to Instagram at the underscore profits with an s underscore pick no s on pick you could go to youtube.com slash at the sports profits just hit 10k followers become 10,001. And then last but not least... Do they get a bonus for that? Do they get an extra big play if they go 10,001? I know, I don't get a bonus, that's for sure. All right. But um, actually, no, I think we're at like 10,006 now. Uh, and then TikTok at the Sports Profits. All right, guys. This guy right here, he works his tail off each and every day. Listen to what he has to say. Put it in your daily rotation. And that's all I could advise you. He's been around the business a long time. All right. The man... Tommy D, where can the people find you except down in South Beach? Forget about that. Don't give them any addresses. But where can they find you on social media and get you all your well, great plays you, you daily? Wanna, you want to check out our website, onlinesportsbet.com. We do have this odds comparison feed. We have seven legal books up there, so you could shop numbers. We do have picks put up daily. My Instagram has hit 13,000. Thank you for the support. OSB underscore sports. YouTube, OSB, dash sports. All right. You heard it, guys. All right. You can find me each and every day on TikTok at SMPix, P-I-C-K-S. That's right. That's my official landing spot for TikTok, at SMPix. And on Instagram, and we're growing each and every day, guys, at SM Sports Picks, P-I-C-K-S. Well, I appreciate you guys being here with me. A great show again. We're going to be back at it again next week. Look for our show on all podcast forums, guys. All the podcast forums this show is up on, whether it's Apple, Spotify, you name it. This is the one and only OSB Sports Podcast with the man Teddy Brooks and the big kahuna. This is Scott Matthews. We'll see you back here next week.